When God gave you eternal life, he put his glory on you. And I took time to correct something that many have not known that has kept us in the state of mediocrity. It has been noised abroad in the body of Christ that God cannot share his glory. How many of you have heard that? I have preached it. And it's not wrong. It's just a matter of semantics. When we say God cannot share his glory, we mean God cannot share the praise for what is done through us with us. It must be clear that is the one in us walking what is happening. Because the reason he sends us out is because we are a sign. He said, this sign shall follow them that believe. A sign does not point to itself. A sign points to another source or another location. And so every time something happens, we must turn people to God that is the worker. He is the doer, not us. So that people don't praise us. They praise the God on our inside who is working. However, scripture reveals that God shares his glory with us. Because the glory of God is the essence of God. And if God does not put his essence on you, there's no way you can shine in your world. The very first man God created, it was his attempt to put glory on him. That's why when man fell, Romans 6.23 said, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. In Romans chapter 8, from verse 28 to 30, in 30 particular, it says, Him that he foreknew, he predestinated. Him that he predestinated, he called. And he said, him that he called, he justified. And he said, him that he justified, he glorified. There are many people who teach it and they say, that is what will happen after rapture. He's not talking after rapture. He's using past terms. He said, he has glorified you. He didn't say he will glorify you. He has already put his glory upon you. And in John 17 verse 22, Jesus said something. He made it most clear. He said, the glory that you have given to me, he said, I have given it to them. And the reason you are able to host God's glory is because eternal life is on your life. Now, when you begin to communicate God to your world, it is the glory on your life that you are communicating because the glory is the essence of God. How can you touch the sick and they are healed? It's because when you touch them, glory transfers from you to them. That glory is the God element in you that touches them. And that's why you cannot claim you are the one who healed the sick. Because it's not your hand necessarily that is healing the sick. It's the glory that is on your life that is healing the sick. So you need to direct the people back to God so that God takes the praise. But the glory that is on you is what affects your world. In Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3, it says, God who at sundry times and in diverse manners, Speak in time past unto the fathers by the prophet, has in this last day spoken to us by his son. He said, who being the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. If you don't embody the glory of God, you can't show God to your generation. When he said, the earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord, like the waters cover the sea. It's as the earth interact with us that they see that glory. As we multiply, glory should multiply. And so when we are gathered together in an assembly like this, especially when we are worshipping, the environment should be choked with too much glory. So much glory that people who entered with problem, even if they were not prayed for, the amount of glory in the atmosphere should choke their crisis. That's why we pray corporately. That's why we, we worship corporately. Because we want to collocate glory together. And when the atmosphere is charged with glory, whether the man of God touches you or not, something is touching you. What would have touched you when the man of God touches you is already touching you in the atmosphere because glory has saturated the atmosphere. This is why coming to church is a must because it's a place where we harness glory. And as we harness glory corporately, that glory begins to address the issues of men. But the church must become aware that we are glory carriers. We are carriers of glory. When you go to your office, you brought glory there. When you go to your business, you brought glory there. And this is the point. When the glory of God is on your life, how can you fail? The Bible said when Israel came out of Egypt, the antidote God gave them was his glory. He said the Shekinah was upon them. If they come into a nation, the army of that nation can be as terrible as they want. They can't defeat Israel because the glory was on their life. He spoke of a king called Sihon, king of the Amorite. He spoke of another king called Og, the king of Bashan. He said these men had warriors that were like beasts. If you look at them, they were like lions and leopards. But when Israel showed up, 
They didn't need to carry the disposition of a beast. They came with the, sound, the shout of the king. The king was among them. And so if Israel carries stone, they will defeat you. If they carry stick, they will defeat you. If they are singing, they will defeat you. Because there is something invisible on their life. This is why he said, whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. My business cannot fail. My ministry cannot fail. Nothing we do fail because there is glory on our lives. If you don't know this, you will be praying and fasting for what is already done. When you pray, pray for deeper things. Ask God to show you mysteries. Ask God to bring you to deeper intimacy. Ask God to show you greater dimension. It's, see, his children that pray, Father, let this business prosper. How can the business fail? It's already a law in the spirit. Whatsoever he doeth, he shall prosper. He didn't say whatsoever he prays for. Unless I'm not doing it, if I'm involved, it must prosper. It's glory. There's glory on our lives. When I touch you, glory touches you. If I enter that business, glory is invested. I know it. And so every time you grow in God, you grow in glory. When you pray, the glory is increased. When you worship, the glory is increased. Did you not read about Jesus? He said as he prayed, the fashion of his countenance was altered. His raiment began to glister. He knew that prayer was more of a glory economy than it was a religious activity. The Pharisees were praying for people to clap for them. They will start by street corner, distracting themselves in prayer. Just the way we do in church today. Somebody carries mic. He wants everybody to call him a prayer warrior. Hebo, hika, hebo. He's not even praying. Jesus will hide himself. He will go to the mountain. Because there are certain distractions that are not tolerated. Because you are entering a glory economy. The other time in Matthew 17, he said as Jesus was praying, he said a cloud descended from heaven. And in that cloud, some escorts came from heaven. He said they stood with him, Moses and Elias. Candidates, agents of glory came through that cloud. Prayer for him was the glory economy. Somebody looks at you and he said, I'm depressed. Me, depressed? How? How? Say somebody lied against him. Somebody accused him. Really? Is that person so important? Who is that important that will lie against me and I'll become depressed? Even if everybody decides to turn against me, when I enter my closet, I meet other unions. I have, I have fellowship beyond men. I have I enter dimensions beyond men. He said, you have come to Mount Zion, the city of the living God, to an innumerable company of angels, to the spirit of just men made perfect. All your friends can betray you. That's their business. You have other friends in Zion. You are a creature of glory. Life has brought you into glory. The whole prophets in Ghana can turn against you. Didn't you read about Jesus? He fulfilled destiny on the cross. Because of glory. You can't, see, you can't fail. You are a creature of glory. That's what eternal life came to do for you.